What is up, guys? And welcome to my very first episode on F1 23. This is my career mode, where I will be starting my very own team, Marduk Motorsport, once again. And we're going to take this team from the bottom all the way to the top. So if that sounds exciting to you guys, please leave a like and subscribe. That would greatly help me out on my quest to hopefully hit 800,000 subscribers. However, We've got a long way, a long road to get there. We are starting off as a newcomer, meaning we'll have no resources, no money, uh, and we're basically playing the game on hard modes. We run no assists, we're on the wheel, and we try to make the AI as hard as we possibly can. So let's get straight into it. Let's make our own team and see just what's new with F1 23. Welcome to my team. Here you'll experience the world of Formula One, not only as a driver, but as the owner of a brand new F1 team. First things first, let's create your driver. Okay, so largely most of this here is is the same when it comes to customization of the car, of the of the character as well. Interestingly, no Lucas Blakely there in the selection in my version of the game so far. You know, outgoing F1 Esports champion from last year. I'm sure he'll be in at some point. But uh, yeah, we're just going to put in our usual stuff, our name, our driver number, uh, commentary name still. Daily is not a selectable option, so we'll have to go with Benjamin. Now we're going to choose our driver number. We, of course, are number eight. I also am partial to number seven and number three. Um, there's all the numbers there if you want to pause the video. Uh, interestingly, with a lot of the drivers who left the sport recently, uh, a lot of low numbers are selectable for the first time in, in years. Well, ever since driver numbers became a thing back in like 2014. So I'd imagine there's a lot of happy people now. Either way, back to uh, customization. We're choosing our helmets. Not many helmets to choose from at the start of the game. Of course, you unlock more further down the line. But uh, yeah, a little bit limited for choice. So don't be surprised if I end up changing my design completely. It may be even the colors as well. But for the moment, we're going with my nation's colors of green and gold. And throw in purple as well, because that may or may not be the team color. We'll start with an easy one. What name would you like to give the team? Uh, well, we've already given this one away. Of course, it has to be Marduk Motorsport. Nice. Now, some kind of income stream is critical. So we need to sign a primary sponsor. Our primary sponsor will pay a sign and bonus to the team up front. This is vital to cover the early investments we need to make. They'll also provide valuable weekly income for us. Each sponsor has a goal they want the team to achieve. If we hit that goal, the sponsor will pay us an additional goal bonus. Cool. Now we get into the important decisions for our team. Choosing our primary sponsor. The higher the risk, the higher the rewards. We'll get back to that in a second because um, we actually choose a sponsor and all these combinations that don't actually add up to a budget that we can actually make work. So we have to come back to that in a second. For now, let's focus on our power unit supplier. Uh, I'm weighing up between Ferrari and Mercedes. I want straight up performance. Um, and technically the easiest way to get performance is to buy the best engine. So I'm thinking Ferrari. Yes, the durability isn't great. We're going to chance it. Hopefully the reliability doesn't get us. We almost have all the key partners for our team now, but we still need a teammate for you. Still as well, we can improve the durability within our own durability department. We'll get to that further down the line. Time for a teammate choice. Um, annoyingly, they don't give you many choices here for, for drivers. There's probably about seven, eight drivers you can choose from here. There's so many My Team icons and, and heritage drivers. Um, we've only got a small selection of F2 drivers for now. We're going with Teo poor chair, and uh, there's the dilemma. We are 50 grand short of making the budget work for us. So we have to go for the highest paying sponsor initially, which is Zenon Dynamics. We're going to run, run with them and Teo poor chair. Our F1 manager, reserve driver, steps up to the main game on the main game. <laughs> New year, new drivers, new team. Welcome and great to have you with us as we move far away from the paddock to the headquarters of the newest outfit on the Formula One grid. We've been granted exclusive access with an interview, not just with the team owner or the star driver, but both. 
because for the first time in modern F1 history, the team owner is behind the wheel themselves. Now is a great time to bring a new team into the sport, particularly off the back of such compelling competition last year. 2022 saw huge regulation changes and it was Red Bull who came out on top in the development race. But that was last year. This year could be a very different story. Let me tell you, this facility is an absolute hive of activity and there is a palpable sense of excitement around the car they've built. Quietly, they truly believe they can challenge at the top and they've had the time now to craft a hugely competitive race car. But theory is one thing and taking on the brightest lights in motorsport is quite another. So how does the owner of F1's 11th team feel as they prepare to be thrust into the limelight of the F1 circus? New driver lineups, Qatar returns, Las Vegas debuts, and the engineering race continues to push the sport and the drivers to new heights. What are they aiming for? Most excited about, most nervous for? Well, soon we will meet them to find out. But first, let's take a look at the brand new car. <laughs> Well, hi, thank you so much for having us. Great to be here. I'm going to start with the question that everyone is asking. Okay, there is the new car, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, bearing in mind, we're so early in the game that things might potentially change. Now, uh, we're going to gloss over this interview with Natalie Pinkham. I don't want to dwell on it too much because it... We'll and tell me about grind the video pacing to an absolute halt. Uh, basically, all these questions she asks uh, pertains to, like, department uh, upgrades and stuff. So, uh, depending on what you want to upgrade within your facilities, um, you know, you praise a certain area, that's where it gets boosted, both in morale or in uh, even the facility level. So, answer your questions very carefully. I tend to prioritize chassis. Facility, but also aerodynamics as well. So uh, that was the kind of strategy going into this. And I think our aero department ended up getting boosted the most. So we love to see it. Well, I could talk to you all day. Thank you so much for your time, but I better let you get back to work. There's plenty more still to do. All the very best for your inaugural F1 season. I love how he just sits there so awkwardly not really saying anything but uh there we go that is the formalities out of the way and now we can get to the day-to-day -day running of our formula one team hope you guys like the uh the livery by the way i think it will undergo some changes um just just light ones but uh yeah that's that's the livery for now um white and purple purple being the mainstay of marduk motorsport through most of my my team career over the last three years. But yeah, we'll, we'll alternate colors here and there as we see fit. We might do special liveries. You know, the, the possibilities are really endless with us because, well, it's our own team and we can do whatever the hell we want. Anyway, getting into some emails now. Uh, this is Francisco as part of the team. Wanted to catch up and talk about some of the tasks I'd like for us to focus on. Uh, there's lots of things to do early on with the development of the car. We need to get We'll hit the ground running, really, with uh, upgrading the facilities. That's probably the main limiting factor early on in this uh, career mode, is uh, actually having the money to upgrade things, because if you don't upgrade the facilities, then uh, you're going to up you're gonna run out of upgrades real quick. So uh, that's going to be our primary focus, getting those facility upgrades going. And to do that, we need to uh, get the acclaim level of the team above level five so we can activate an extra sponsor. So that's going to be the, the focus for now. Uh, emails all dealt with. And there we go. There are our facilities. Spec level one on the aero. Everything else, though, is a big fat zero. I was expecting or kind of hoping that our answers would have given us better facilities and that maybe have a secondary facility on spec level one. But it is what it is. Um, we'll, we'll take it. We get uh, extra resource point generation from the uh, from the aero side as well. So that's going to be awfully helpful. But we want to get all of our facilities on spec level one just to get started, so that we can uh, crack on with uh, with upgrades 
So, uh, yeah, it all begins here, and there is the performance index. Somehow, we are midfield. Now, in my opinion, when you're starting up a new F1 team, especially in this game, you should be, you should be last for the ultimate challenge. I selected newcomer, so I should be a backmarker. I didn't select a midfield challenger, so I don't know why it's put us there, but maybe for the full version of the game, they'll do some balancing and, and put us further back. I think this was a thing last year, but yeah, it ended up getting, getting rebalanced. So it is what it is. We're going to go from here. And actually, because the development is going to be so slow at the start, we might actually get overtaken by other teams. So maybe that is intentional at the end of the day. Looking at upgrades and seeing what we can pile onto the car before we get to the, the first race in Bahrain, I think it's going to have to be on the aero side because we've got a manufacturing upgrade which speeds up the upgrade so yeah only aero stuff will go on before Bahrain so I think we're going to go for some front downforce and just make the car a little bit more pointy um, a car with with aero is a nice car to drive so fairly smart upgrade to do after that I think we'll go for weight reduction weight reduction is always one of the best upgrades you can do on the game. Now, here's a look at the driver market and uh, you know some of the ratings for some of the drivers. Lando there, quite highly rated, 89 with 91 pace. Mika Hakkinen, new My Team icon for this year. Um, you'll see Devin Butler is in there as well. Mark Webber, my teammate from last year. Felipe Massa is still in the game. Nico Hulkenberg went from a My Team icon to a driver this year. And there is Devin Butler. Interesting. 83 rated and uh, decent pace as well. There's Aiden Jackson. 85 pace for him. And Kasper Ackerman, a man I wasn't expecting to be selectable in career mode. 80 pace from him. Oscar Piastri, Felipe Drogovic. I actually really like the overalls of the free agent drivers. I actually think it's quite banging. But uh, yeah, there we go. If I'm honest... I think Teo is probably going to get replaced very early on in this career mode. And Kelly Mayer as well. Of course, not forgetting her. 73 pace. So, yeah, if there's a driver, a female driver you want to sign, Kelly might be your girl. Um, I believe Jamie Chadwick is in the game as well, but I couldn't find her in the selectable drivers on this screen at this stage. Uh, maybe that'll be a thing when the full version of the game comes out. I'm not too sure. But, uh, yeah. There we go. Let me know who you'd like to see as my teammate at some point in this career mode. If it were my choice, I'd probably go for one of the uh, characters from, from Breaking Point. We'll, we'll say that much. But let's move on now to uh, more pressing matters, and that is the car. The car is going to be pretty shocking to drive when we get to the first race. Uh, we need to put some sponsors on, first of all. Keep Xenon Dynamics happy. Uh, this just makes it feel a little bit more like an actual F1 car and not something that was made by an F1 game studio. But uh, yeah, just giving the car a little bit more of a real feel. Unfortunately, just the one sponsor on the car at this stage. And that all comes down to not having a, uh, a high acclaim level. So once we get acclaim level 5, we can get a secondary sponsor and then we can have up to like 4 sponsors, I believe. So we'll get there eventually. But uh, on the customization front, unfortunately, there's no change to uh, the amount of uh, sponsors you can have or uh, where you can actually place actual sponsors. I'd love to be able to have full customization of everything everywhere on the car, but unfortunately we don't have that yet. Hopefully an overhaul is coming next year for my team. It certainly needs one. Um, yes, it's not completely unchanged my team some of the, a lot of the menus have had a refresh and just a slightly different feel in the in the ui but largely from what i've seen so far my team appears to be the same but um yeah hopefully that big overhaul is coming next year either way uh back to upgrades uh we're going for minor weight reduction uh as i said already weight reduction is the best upgrade you can put on on the car on this game so uh you best believe whenever we have a chance to minimize the weight of the car, we're putting it on because it makes the car faster in the corners, faster in the straights, better tire wear, 
less weight is just OP. So uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, a lot of department events, uh, as you'd expect early on with a brand new team, a lot of teething issues, which we're having to deal with, and we'll find the ramifications of those further on down the line. But uh, now at this stage, we have the, the money to actually upgrade the personnel department. We're not going to waste money on that. We're actually going to wait for either marketing to upgrade that. Or, like I said, we'll try and get the facilities to either spec 1 or spec 2 as soon as we can. But now, let's go to the race weekend. Found your workstation then. Everything satisfactory. I'm Francisco, by the way. The head up R&D for the team. It's great to have the chance to finally speak with you. And I'm sure we'll be getting to know each other pretty well over the coming months. But for now, I'll let you get settled. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. We are in our, I guess, motorhome with uh, with the team, ready to start our first race. A few uh, more emails coming in, tutorials, weekend preview, uh, some development updates. That's probably the most juicy one to have a look at because those are upgrades that have been piled onto the car before we've actually had control of upgrades. So weight reduction, uh, redistribution, reduction, general maintenance, general wear, and uh, I think that was a supplier upgrade to the engine potentially as well. So uh, quite a few upgrades heading into this race. So I guess from that standpoint, maybe it's understandable why we've actually jumped quite a few teams heading into this race. We've had a big upgrade package that I didn't know about uh, before taking control of the team. But uh, all right, let's get started. Time for our very first practice session. Morning mate, Mark here. Just want to say once again, thanks so much for making me part of this team. There's a huge number of talented people as I look around this garage and I cannot wait to see what we can all accomplish together, including you. Our journey to the Constructors' Championship starts right here. Right here, right now. Welcome guys to our first on-track running uh, in a brand new car. You're going to see exactly where we stand at this stage. Uh, it's going to be a long road long long road to the constructors and uh yeah that starts here the foundations have been laid and uh now we're gonna see where we actually stand against real teams uh in f1 it's quite a daunting process uh setup wise i really don't know what i'm doing yet there's uh, the handling has changed quite drastically from f1 22 to 23 that i imagine a lot of the setup nuances don't work on this game so um i'm looking forward to exploring that with you guys don't push the car just yet. Track is still green. Try to take it easy for the first couple of laps. And here we go, firing into life for the first time. No pre-season testing, at least what it appears so on the surface. That would be sick to have pre-season testing at some point in the future. But for now, this is our first meters in action in our very own car that we created. And uh, so far, it actually feels okay. It doesn't feel terrible. Our back market cars of the past and previous games feel absolutely awful. But, uh, you know, this one, it seems like it's got a decent base. Um, traction... You know, it leaves a little bit to be desired. There's uh, a little bit less mechanical grip than, say, like a fully upgraded Red Bull or any of the equal cars that you drive in, uh, you know, time trial or, or online. As you can see there, there is our first spin as evidence of the lack of grip. But, uh, you know, these are the things that we're going to work on, both with my driving style, but also upgrading the car, making the weight redistribution a lot better and taking some uh, unnecessary weight out of the car, adding downforce, all these things will make the car the complete package. And uh, I'll also adapt my driving style as we go along as well. I'm still learning with, you know, F123. As well, it's it's Friday morning at Bahrain. It's a very green circuit, so the track grip is, is going to be pretty horrendous as well. So I look forward to uh, improving things 
as we go along. Tire wear looks like it's slightly better than expected the deeper we get into the stint, so that's nice. Potentially looking at like a one-stop, I'd say. But, uh, you know, all these things are up in the air as well. We don't know what the tire wear rates are on this year's game. And so many things to explore. There's so much data gathering that comes from the first episode of a new career mode that uh, we're kind of just flying blind, really. And I'm really excited to see, you know, what works and, and what doesn't, really. But, uh, you know, tire wear seems to be pretty savage so far, despite only doing a few laps of running on the mediums before. We're jumping out again on another set of mediums, or the same set of mediums, actually. But trying different setup philosophies. Um, I'm just playing around with the presets uh, that the engineer gives us. Um, so what I tried was low downforce first. And uh, that latest lap that we did was high downforce. Because on the time trial leaderboards, at the time of recording, high downforce was actually quicker around Bahrain. But um, that high downforce lap on lap 6 was a second slower compared to the previous lap on low downforce. So... It's, it's really hard to correlate between time trial and, and a proper race. So many things work on time trial that don't work when you actually go to a race weekend. So I think we're going to stick with what we know and hope that low downforce is still the meta on F123. It is Bahrain. There's a lot of straights at the end of the day. So uh, we're going to take a stab in that direction and uh, we're going to see if that works. Anyway, um, resource points coming in. We've got 1,741 to chuck on some upgrades. So um, we'll see what we can do after this. The discounts are also really nice to uh, make things cheaper. I'm, I'm currently debating whether I should wait another race, get more discounts in, and then be able to afford more upgrades. Because that's a genuine strategy. The longer you wait, the more discounts you have, and uh, the easier or quicker it is to pile your way through the order. Our engine, by the way, is insane. We're like the fourth best engine in the field. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we bought that engine. We didn't develop that engine, so I guess it makes sense. Major drag reduction upgrades. That's something I can get on board with. 1,100 resource points, and that'll go on for the Australian Grand Prix. So, yeah, we've spent the points. Hopefully, they don't fail. Oh dear, we are already here for qualifying for our very first race. Now we truly find out where we stand amongst this field of Formula One cars. Here we go, uh, taking the first few minutes of the session just to uh, let the track ramp up a bit. I I've found that like track evolution does make a genuine difference on the F1 games, and this one is no different, especially given the, the track's cooling off and uh, new tire advantage is, is pretty crazy on this year's game. Uh, I'm hoping to just get through with, uh, with one run, given where we actually stand with our car being fairly solidified in the midfield there. Teo Porcher. Not exactly up there, as I'd expect him to be. 18th place in the moment, uh, with the extra two cars in qualifying or in this field. Cutoff now is P17 to uh, get through to Q2. So, top 16 is what we want, and uh, yeah, hopefully we will get that. Seems like an okay start to the lap so far. From what I've noticed at the moment, low speed rotation probably isn't the best in this car. The car feels great at high speed, but low speed, not so much. As you can see, the car pushing a little bit wide there with understeer. We have, in the end, gone for the low downforce setup, and uh, that means we will be quicker in the race, but maybe sacrifice a little bit in qualifying, and uh, I feel like we're feeling those effects a little bit. Got the apex in nicely there into the double left-hander. Traction, still struggling for just that mechanical grip. So it's low speed corners that seems to be our Achilles heel. And unfortunately, there are a lot of them around here in Bahrain. But uh, let's hopefully finish off the lap nicely. Uh, sector three, I'd expect we'll be able to pick up a little bit of time here compared to the AI through these medium speed corners. Get the nose in, try and get all the power as early as we can, using up all the track on exit to uh, minimize, well, without trying to get a, a penalty or an invalidation because this is our one and only lap here in qualifying. We're putting all our eggs in this basket. Hopefully it is good enough for a Q2 appearance in our first time of asking. It's only 19th. 
19th place on the grid in the Bahrain Grand Prix. Not even ahead of our teammate in the end. This car is a lot worse in practice than what it is in theory. We have the fifth, sixth best car in the field. Uh, sixth or seventh best car. That's probably an exaggeration. But certainly when it comes to extracting the performance on track, in qualifying, it is nowhere near what we predicted before the season started. Back row with a grid start for me. 1.6 seconds off. Yes, I could have gone out and done more than one run, but I was pretty confident in the car and the pace given where we were in the performance index. I was saving the tyres for Q2, maybe even Q3 in a set for the race, but it wasn't to be. We're out in Q1. What a wake-up call that is. I'm praying this car is better in the race because that's what we set it up for. Wish me luck. No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal, and it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Sainz, Hamilton, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Gasly, Norris, Stroll, Bottas, Hulkenberg, Ocon, Joe, Albon, Oscar Piastri, Magnussen, Sonoda, Sargent, Theo Porcher, Benjamin, Theo Porcher. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as once again we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. and They've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. So it's road to glory style then. As we were expecting before starting this career mode. Uh, my hopes were a little too high after seeing the performance index, and, and now they're brought back down again. Probably where they should be. Welcome to the grid of the first race of this 2023 Formula 1 season here at the Bahrain Grand Prix. We have a lot of work to do from P21 on the grid. Uh, no engine penalty today. Uh, we need to get through all three of our engines before we can take one of those. But uh, we're going to have to go full send. We're going to have to go aggressive on this first lap to gain some early places. Uh, if we're lucky, we can uh, cling on to the DRS of faster cars and get dragged along. Uh, if if it's like borderline between a one and a two stop, and it looks like it might be, um, we could be potentially gain something out of this. If, if people who are starting on softs end up doing a two stop, then there's definitely some gains to be made there. So it's not all doom and gloom in this race. Uh, we have seen two stops from the AI. We've seen some crazy moments from the AI around this circuit. And uh, with simulation damage, red flags now in the picture, anything is possible in these career mode races. So we've got to keep our nose clean. I, I, I know I'm contradicting myself here by saying we're going to go full send in a turn one. We're going to go as full send as we can without risking the car. I think that's the key difference. So, yeah. <laughs> Not sure what to expect. Uh, but what I do know is that uh, when we get deep into this race with tyre wear, the car's not going to feel so great. So also managing that will be an art in itself. But away we go for the formation lap for this Bahrain Grand Prix. Interesting that Charles Leclerc has got pole position for this first race. Verstappen and Perez, second and third, putting pressure on the Ferrari. Sainz in fourth there, keeping Red Bull honest. And then we have Mercedes, kind of best of the rest. Aston Martin not really up there like they should be, but of course uh, the performance of the cars will be adjusted as uh, the patches start to roll out with this current game. But for now, though, let's see if we can strike while the iron's hot, while we've got a somewhat decent car. I'd imagine we'll probably slide further back down the performance index. So if we can get a result today, that'll be absolutely massive in the history of this team. Here we go. Let's make history for Marduk Motorsport. Our first race begins now. Away we go, and it looks like an actual decent start compared to the AI. Nick DeVries. Looks like he's still in F2 back there. Absolutely nowhere near us heading into turn one. We got the inside of a few cars. Hopefully no damage. This is the, the big sticking point with simulation damage, damaging the floor. 
It's very easy to do. If you make side-to-side -side contact with AI, thankfully, we've got away scot-free and in P19. So, decent start there. Two spots gained. Sergeant next in the Williams. Williams actually look a little bit quicker than what they should be. So, uh, that'll be interesting to see if they can get some early points before they get nerfed at some point. But, uh, yeah, I'd expect, uh, for us, our battle today is going to be with McLaren, with Williams, Alpha Tauri. Uh, a couple overtakes there as we ran wide, going up the inside of both the uh, the Williams there. P17 for us now. Uh, we managed to somewhat turn a mistake into an actual overtake there. So that was uh, rather fortunate as the Williams boys got, I don't know, got caught up behind each other. Just a little bit hesitant there on that first lap. But we're away. P17. Oscar Piastri next. If that McLaren is anything to go by, like his real-life counterpart, that thing should be pretty slow in a straight line. So... They, they should be pretty easy pickings for us in this race. I'd imagine we could probably beat Alpha Romeo in this race as well. All things going well. A bit of a missed apex there, and Albon doesn't need a second invitation as he dive up, dives up the inside. We got forced off the track there in that contact on exit. But uh, yeah, lost a lot of ground, lost a lot of touch to Piastri, which is uh, absolutely crucial. Charles Leclerc still leads this Bahrain Grand Prix, and actually, it's a Ferrari 1-2. If you look at the minimap, so Max Verstappen has had his ears boxed in by both the Ferraris and they have the ascendancy early on in this career mode. Back to us now. And uh, after recovering from that moment with Albon, we've actually managed to get back on the rear ends of Oscar here and uh, potentially we'll be, we'll be on the move fairly soon if we can uh, get our eggs lined up in a row here. Uh, he's looking a little bit slow on exit of that right-hander. And I'm thinking about maybe an Alonso-esque move into the double left. It's an audacious move, but he leaves the space and Piastri, I think, is going to hold on with drive traction. We're going to have to go back up into overtake to make this work. We separated him from the pack, so he's getting less slipstream from those ahead. And there we go. That McLaren is too slow on a straight line to keep us behind. And uh, that is job done early on in this Bahrain Grand Prix. It looks like we've got pace relative to those around us, especially... You know, while they're, in, while they're in the pack and, and maybe not driving to their full potential, full rhythm just yet. Uh, we've got to make the most of this while these guys are a little bit disjointed and not really in their natural flow yet. So that's the aim. Oh my word, not an apex hit into the final corner. Massive slide on the Astro Turf and Piastri re-overtakes us. Not ideal. Punch it in overtake. That McLaren is... So slow in a straight line. We've got the better engine. We've got the better drag reduction. We've got DRS. No, we don't have DRS. But uh, yeah, it is, it's not a fair fight between us and those guys. But they have it on us in the corners. So it'll be imperative for us to pull away if we can in this first and second sector. But um, yeah, as far as racing goes, you want to have a car that's quick on the straights. If you have that, then uh, you're going to have a, a, a much more fun Sunday than... I can't like the McLaren, which is quick in the corners and has nothing on the straights. That is... Whenever I have that combo and I'm trying to overtake someone who's quicker in a straight line, it's so frustrating. So uh, we've gone for the safer play in terms of actually getting overtakes done, given where we started or where I expected the car to be. I expected us to be in the fight and having to overtake people to get somewhere near the point. So hence why we've gone for the lower downforce philosophy, even if it is... Or was I think definitely was slower in qualifying. It'll hopefully mean that we've got the the better package to move forward in the race. And uh, given my current prospects, I, it's not impossible to think that points could be on the horizon in this race. What is that? The engine has just gone red. Normally on previous games, it's an engine failure. But I've not had a radio message. No, we're out of the Grand Prix. That is it. Our day is done before we've even got started in this race. Meanwhile, Guan Yu Zhou has spun out while we're having an engine failure. There, there goes the car up in smoke. Our first race was actually starting to go well. And then it ends. We are out of our very first race at the first time of asking. And selecting that Ferrari power unit has already reared... It's ugly heads. <sighs> I can't believe it. That's it then for another spectacular Grand Prix here in Bahrain and a real champion's drive to take the win. Tell me, how
how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. Well, there we go then. What a turnaround from, from Red Bull. Uh, it was a Ferrari 1-2 in those first few laps. And, uh, you know, we'll see that on screen right now. Lap 4, Leclerc and Sainz are 1-2 and two at this stage. And somehow they've allowed both the Red Bulls to get on the podium. But uh, there's the moment where it all capitulated for us. In front of our eyes, the engine has gone boom. Uh, we expected some teething issues with this new car, new package, having to put it all together uh, kind of last minute. And uh, yeah, we, we have a retirement. But at least the car is somewhat quick in the race. We can take solace in that, in that uh, we'll be pretty quick, especially when we've got a combination of, you know, long straights, but a lot of high speed corners. So tracks like Jeddah, we've got coming up next. Silverstone, Monza, I think will be will be very successful ones for us. And we haven't even had the drag reduction upgrade come in yet. Australia will be pretty good as well. But yeah, Bahrain, yes, there's a lot of straights. Uh, but there are a lot of slow speed corners and I really think that was our Achilles heel. So I think we're actually quicker than what we displayed this weekend. And we were starting to unravel that pace as the Grand Prix wore, wore on. But that's it. Leclerc even DNFs from the race as well. So Ferrari have had an absolute stinker today. A DNF for their own car, a DNF for their customer team, and uh, they've thrown away a one too. Red Bull, uh, yeah, taking top honors again. Carlos Sainz does get P2, at least breaks up that for that Red Bull one too, but yeah, not the start that they wanted, not the start that we wanted, especially given it's the first episode of a brand new game. I really wanted to showcase the racecraft of the AI, the tire wear, everything, but you know, as is the case in motorsport. Not everything goes your way, so uh, apologies about that, guys. We've actually gone down to the minimum driver acclaim you can ever have. If there was a level zero, we would have got demoted down to that after that performance today. Absolutely savage from the game. I only gained 100k from this race, which is absolutely devastating. So we start off with no points we we actually we've actually gone backwards after after all this unfortunately but luckily we have Jeddah to look forward to and i'm hoping that our performance will be even oh my god we now have no resource points because of our <laughs> because of our decision earlier on in the on the episode with uh, the department event oh my word we have um pretty much no resource points 400 there Amazing. We, we actually got a 400 point bonus for the failure for the MGUH, uh, which we just got there. So uh, if not for that, we'd literally be on like 60 resource points. Uh, we'll check the emails in a second. Yeah, there's the bonus for the R&D for the failure. Yeah, we'd be, we'd be on literally no resource points if not for that. Uh, so yeah, there we go, guys. Not the ideal start to the career mode. Like I said, I, I wanted to showcase everything there was to showcase in a full-length race. But uh, yeah, it was it was out of our control today. But thankfully, you won't have to wait too long to see, hopefully, some redemption in race two in Jeddah. I'll be uploading many, many episodes of career mode. The plan is to upload daily uh, until the end of season one and just crank out as many videos as I can. I'm going to be doing some online stuff. Uh, F1 World, um, co-op career modes, Breaking Point as well will be on the channel later today, so stay tuned for that. So uh, if you're watching this, Breaking Point is probably already out most likely. But uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for your support. If you could, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel to uh, see more of my F1 23 videos, to join me on this journey of taking this car from the absolute bottom where we are right now. This is a low point in our history. But from here, the only way is up. And I hope you guys will join me on that journey to being the best team in Formula One. Let's go for that constructors. Might take us a while to get there, but I won't give up until we do. Thanks so much for watching. 
Uh, check out my previous videos if you haven't seen them already. And uh, yeah, there'll be more, plenty more F123 content coming very soon.